people here have actually read that book, Provocative Hypnosis, before you came here? Most part of it. Most part of it. Okay. You're a courageous woman. <laughs> you read the book and then came. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know when, when I first released the book, I thought to myself, Jesus, you know, I'm, I might have to have a, a different website uh, for the book compared to all my other professional services because nobody's going to read that book and actually want to sign up. <laughs> I, was, I, I was predicting that people would, you know, go, well, you know, could you work with my wife, you know, or my friend, you know, that, that type of thing. And what happened was that if you write a book like that, you, you'll be stuck with working with interesting cases forever. You wouldn't believe the type of phone calls that I get. But what I would get, I, I would get people who, who would call me, and, and this, this surprised me and shocked me. They, they would call me and say, you know, are you Jurgen Rasmussen, you know, blah, blah, blah. I would say, yes, guilty of search. Uh, I want you to kick my ass. I want you to provoke me. You know, I, I, I want to book an appointment, and I want, to, you know, I want you to really do that stuff with me. And I, I would kind of lean back and go, really? Is the person really ordering this? And the question then became, you know, how, because if, if they order me on the phone to, to, to kind of be outrageous and do this stuff, and I do that, <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not really provocative. It, it's yeah. just giving somebody something that they expect. So has anybody ever seen Stephen Gilligan? So I, I learned to do my best like Stephen Gilligan impression when they came in. So when they came in, I would say, I'll come, you know, in this kind of soft, impressive way. I would say something to the effect of all that strength, all that willpower, you've tried to control for so long, and it's not working. And there's this deeper aspect with a different type of strength, that the more you try to fight it, the more it's beginning to emerge. And as that prepares to emerge now, whatever that is, and I would often get people go into these very vulnerable states, these very kind of open states, as, as a result of doing that. But the reason I'm telling the story is, is because that is provocation. A lot, of, a, a lot of people, when they hear the word provocative, automatically think in your face, or, or aggressive, or uh, playing the devil's advocate. But if, if somebody kind of expects that, and you do that, you, you're not really provoking them. So I, I'd like to invite you to think of provoking as calling forth. Meaning that being very vulnerable, or using humor, or boredom, or a, a very permissive approach, all these things can be extremely provocative depending upon that particular person. So provocative isn't a specific approach. It's, it's essentially about doing something to kind of move the person a little bit out of how they normally make sense out of experience. And that's going to vary from person to person. So I'd like you to keep that in mind mm -hmm. as, as you do that. Uh, I'd like to